and that was on TV, and it just felt like karma. And we went, oh, that's it, Bob, and it looks good, and people will think it means binary object and things like that. And it doesn't, it's just Bob, it's just his name. So, so there you go. Question. Question. Right there. Um, did you ask Jillian Anderson to play Aida Noli or she heard you doing X-Files studio? Jillian, because obviously they were shooting, I'm just sitting down. Yeah. Um, Jillian, they were shooting the X-Files in town, obviously, and we found out through somebody, a friend of a friend or an agent or something like that, that Jillian Anderson was a big fan of the show. And so we got in touch with him and said, well, do you want to come into the studio and have a look around and say hello? And of course we were all like, oh my God, that's <laughs> um, And I got to show around and it was really cool. It was so exciting. Um, and while we were showing around, you know, we sort of, not wanting to miss an opportunity, we said, would you be at all interested in doing a voice on the show? And she's like, oh, I'd love to. So that was it, of course, as soon as she left the building, Ian and me and Phil are in the room going, okay, now we need to come up with a plot. <laughs> we, we need to get Julian Anderson in the show. And that was where we came up with the whole... We, we actually had a writer who'd worked on the X-Files and loved Reboot, and he'd sent us a spec script, which I believe was called Trust No One. But the story was completely different. Um, but it was a great X-Files parody, even though it was the wrong storyline. So we got that guy to write the episode, Trust No One, and put Gillian in it. And uh, she was, she loved doing it. Did you direct that one? No, all right, that's season two, I guess, yeah. So um, she loved doing it, she had a great time, she was a sweetheart to work with. And we said to her, do you think David would like to do, you know, the other half of the duo? And we got the message through to him and got back an emphatic, no, I'm not interested. So we got Scott to do a complete and utter piss take of David Dukov. Uh, quick look. So they went, okay, you know, well, you've seen the X-Files, we need you to do David Duchovny. And I went, I've never seen the X-Files. <laughs> and there was this... <gasps> and so I went and I got some and I watched it and I went, and I do a lot of impressions and they're, you know, usually fairly broad. I watched and I went, how can you do that? He does nothing. <laughs> so I literally just stuck my nose in the microphone and was like, the aliens have taken this mistake. <laughs> and now it's how I played the whole show. It's just like that. <laughs> the funny thing was a little quick offshoot for that when we were auditioning for Beast Wars lunch later, and there was about 6,000 rounds of auditions for that show. And we kept going through processes and processes, coming back and call back and call back. And then eventually we had to go in and meet with the, the executive types, the suits from the toy company. And I was going, oh man, this is where all creativity goes out the window. So I had to call back for a couple of characters and I'm waiting and I go in and sure enough, there's these very sort of officious looking young men in suits, very Brooks Brothers and very buttoned down. They're like, oh, uh, you know, thank you very much for coming in. We uh, very much enjoyed your auditions for, um, oh, um. Uh, so I did my auditions for Beast Wars, and they went, oh, by the way, um, <clears throat> you um, you worked on the reboot program, did you not? And I went, yeah, uh, I did, actually. They went, oh, we have a question. Um, could you tell us who played the fax modem character on reboot? And I went, well, I can answer that. I went, yeah, it was me. And they went, dude, that was freaking you, man! That was the best thing ever! And the next day I got a phone call going, hi, oh, you booked four characters on Beast Wars. <laughs> turned into like ravening fanboys that were like, they, they flipped, they loved that episode, and the show, so. You never know, do ya? <laughs> right um, can you explain a little bit about the process of, like, what you guys did in the studio? Including, like, you know, <laughs> 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 Say what? For the sound, or what? Yeah, are you talking about the, doing the voices? Yeah, voice record? <clears throat> How do we record? Okay, okay, the pro basically the process of voice recording. <clears throat> I mean, we've worked together, all of us have worked together for years and years and years. But we show up for, for a show, everyone's got a script. We usually have, you know, ahead of time so we know what we're doing. Everyone highlights with these little highlighters. It's my line, my line, crap, you know. <laughs> so, um, so uh, sometimes, it all depends. You know, when we first started in this business, we used to rehearse. 
We used to go through the entire script through once just to get you know everybody used to it. But it seemed like the best stuff was the first stuff that you do. And then we say things like, yeah, yeah, Scott, no, it was great. Just do it like you did in rehearsal. <laughs> it's not yet, but it's gone. You know, it's like that moment was gonna... profoundly ADD actors. Here. Right. So, so, so we thought, you know what? We're recording, or not recording this. We're not recording the rehearsal. So why don't we just forget the rehearsal and do the show? So that's what we. That's what we do. <clears throat> so we just get. Is this a waste of time? You know. So basically, what we do is we go through and we do it in little scenes, little chunks, and we'll go through. Okay, this is like you know lines one to twenty, and we'll go through that little little sequence. And, uh, and then, yeah, okay, yeah, we're feeling good. It's uh, maybe a little quicker overall. Let's just do it again. So we do it again. And then maybe we come and say, maybe, okay, uh, yeah, uh, Paul, we want to get, you know, just pick up your, be a little stronger. He's farther away, blah, 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 blah. You just, it's very tedious. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't find it tedious at all, Michael. I actually found that whole process of recording and taking all the funky bits out. Very enlightening and endearing. That's I lovely. Really, really I don't buy that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed every moment of it. No, them. these guys are great. What? We recorded the very first uh, shows at a place called GGRP, which is uh, actually, no, it was called, um, what was it? They were Dick Rogers. Rogers. No, it wasn't Dick Rogers. Dick Rogers upstairs. But it was GGRP. It, it was Gary Spitzman. <laughs> Did we first? Uh, was it the Are first? Are you talking about like the building on 7th and Columbia? Yeah. GRP now? I yeah, mean. no, the one where. No, uh, no, no, they were on 8th Avenue upstairs. That was Dick and Rogers. Yeah, yeah, yeah but there was, was Dick and Rogers here. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Dick and Rogers was here, and then GGRP, which is uh, Uptown Sound, it was called. Uptown, Uptown Sound. Uptown. And Uptown My Sound was part of GGRP, and it was a big, huge recording studio. That's not even. I don't even think it's there. There's somebody else in there now. But this studio was one of the biggest actual rooms that I've ever been in the studio. It was wonderful. It's recorded. Brass band? <clears throat> yeah, it was it was huge. So yes, we, we recorded it there, which is Mount Mellon. And we did some stuff, I think we did some stuff in Little Mountain. I think we did some ah, stuff. And then Pine yeah. and then Pinewood, which was downtown, which is no longer there too, so go figure. There's a condo there, Yeah. Oh, five minutes. Five minutes, maybe one more question. Oh, I've got two more. Well, oh, two more questions. There's one right there. Patient. And we have, oh no, sorry, it's you first, then you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Thanks. I'm the policeman. Yeah. With, uh, with the episode where the penguin makes an appearance, <laughs> Wallace and Gromit, did you have any connections with the Wallace and Gromit creators? Okay, the, this is a question about the penguin from Wallace and Gromit who made way too many appearances <laughs> in Reboot. <laughs> the, when you're doing a show like Reboot, um, you. It's like, if you do it once, it's a joke. If you do it twice, it's pushing the joke. If you do it four times, you're gonna get sued. <laughs> so, you know, we, we did a, a thing, there was a scene in, I think it was Identity Crisis, um, where we, we homaged a scene of, uh, from The Wrong Trousers, where Gromit's hiding in a box and looking through holes in the box, and, da, 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 and the penguin, we had the penguin walk by and look at him, just like he does in Wallace and Gromit, and walked out. And it was funny and everybody loved it and ha ha ha. And then what happened was the animators loved that penguin. So they'd be doing a scene and either the animator who was doing the scene or the director who was doing the show would go, put the penguin in the background. <laughs> so, so, and of course we the those guys would do that and we didn't know, you know, if I wasn't watching every shot in every show all the time, stuff got by me. And what would happen, usually happen, was we'd be sitting in Ian's office and we'd be watching the finished show back, and Ian would, Ian would go, why is the penguin in this show? <laughs> and I'd be like, oh god, and I'd go and tell that director or that animator, don't use the penguin again. And then like four shows later, the penguin would appear again. <laughs> and it eventually, after the fourth time, like I say, four times, you're gonna get in trouble, twice if it's George Lucas, but four times, <laughs> if it's something like Wallace and Gromit. And at that point, Ian, I think, send out a, a loud, shouty page through the building saying, I want the penguin deleted. <laughs> so the penguin was deleted from the system and never appeared again. So. <laughs> I'm actually looking for maybe a little bit more backstory behind the MS Paint episode, where Hex gets a hold of uh, the Paint program and it ended up destroying the 
bit more in what way. I'm not going to get to backstory to it. It was a really, it was a really crazy episode. It was a really crazy episode. It's one of our best, uh, I think, but it should be because it was animated twice. I don't know if you were on that one, or you were involved with that one. Because what happened with that one, and I'll try and be political about this, um, the director, we had an outside director in on that one, and he kind of ran with the idea, shall we say. And he went off in all kinds of crazy directions, and the show was way behind schedule, and way over budget, and way over length, and had a bunch of stuff in it that, it's like, where did this come from? It was crazy. And Ian actually had to take charge of that show and uh, move it down the playlist and actually basically redo the entire show. So it was kind of animated twice, which is why it's so good, because it's got so much work in it. It should look good.